Sulfonamides and benzylpyrimidines are often found co-formulated together. There are a few different sulfonamides that can be used as antimicrobial agents, but they are seldomly used as a monotherapy in the clinic. The sulfonamide that I'll focus on in this video is sulfamethoxazole. The only benzylpyrimidine clinically available is trimethoprim. Trimethoprim can be given alone or in combination with sulfamethoxazole. When trimethoprim is given in combination with sulfamethoxazole, it is often referred to as TMP-SMX, with the TMP as an abbreviation for trimethoprim and SMX as an abbreviation for sulfamethoxazole. You may also recognize this TMP-SMX combination by the name of cotrimoxazole, or its brand name of Bactrim. Both trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole have distinct mechanisms of action. Trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole are synergistic when given together because both act to inhibit different steps in the tetrahydrofolate biosynthetic pathway. Drugs that act in the same biological synthesis or biological signaling pathway are often synergistic. In order to understand how both trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole work as antibiotics, it is important to review purine synthesis in bacteria. One of the many distinguishing characteristics between humans and bacteria is that bacteria are unable to use exogenous folate for tetrahydrofolate and ultimately purine synthesis. Bacteria must synthesize tetrahydrofolate from para-aminobenzoic acid or PABA or as I will refer to it as PABA. Purines are ultimately synthesized from PABA in this pathway. And since this pathway is critical for bacterial purine synthesis and not for human purine synthesis, selective toxicity for both trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole is achieved. Trimethoprim acts as a potent and selective competitive inhibitor of bacterial dihydrofolic reductase. Bacterial dihydrofolic reductase converts dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid, which is an essential step in the biosynthesis of tetrahydrofolate purines, and ultimately bacterial DNA. Trimethoprim is a poor inhibitor of mammalian dihydrofolic reductase. Sulfamethoxazole is a structural analog of PABA and acts as a competitive non-functional mimic of PABA to inhibit dihydroteroate synthase. When sulfamethoxazole binds dihydroteroate synthase, the enzyme is unable to bind PABA, which prevents dihydroteroate synthase from synthesizing dihydrofolic acid from PABA. When sulfamethoxazole is given as a monotherapy, it acts as a bacteriostatic antibiotic. Resistance can develop to sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. The main mechanism of resistance revolves around changes to the bacterial tetrahydrofolate biosynthetic pathway that I just mentioned while talking about the mechanisms of action. Sulfamethoxazole resistance can develop simply due to bacterial overproduction of PABA. Overproduction of PABA can overwhelm sulfamethoxazole and allow the bacterial PABA to outcompete sulfamethoxazole, leading to the successful synthesis of dihydrofolic acid from PABA by dihydroteroate synthase. A second mechanism of resistance to sulfamethoxazole involves reduced binding of sulfamethoxazole to dihydroteroate synthase. Resistant strains of bacteria can sometimes upregulate a mutated dihydroteroate synthase that has reduced binding for sulfamethoxazole. Lastly, resistant bacteria can decrease sulfamethoxazole entry into the bacteria by reducing bacterial permeability. If sulfamethoxazole is unable to concentrate inside a bacterial cell, then sulfamethoxazole will be unable to outcompete PABA and resistance will develop. Resistance to trimethoprim occurs in similar mechanisms as resistance to sulfamethoxazole. Similar to sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim resistance can also occur due to reduced bacterial permeability. If trimethoprim cannot concentrate within the bacterial cell, then trimethoprim will not be able to effectively inhibit dihydrofolic reductase and resistance will develop. A second mechanism of resistance to trimethoprim is the bacterial upregulation of dihydrofolate reductase. An increased amount of dihydrofolate reductase will spread trimethoprim too thin and will allow some functional dihydrofolate reductases to slip through the trimethoprim inhibitory net. This mechanism will lead to the continued synthesis of tetrahydrofolic acid and purine synthesis will continue. Lastly, and similarly to sulfamethoxazole, a resistant bacterial strain can upregulate a mutated 
dihydrofolate reductase with reduced binding affinity for trimethoprim. Reduced binding of trimethoprim to dihydrofolate reductase will allow the enzyme to function normally and will allow for the antibacterial action of trimethoprim to be diminished. Since we are really talking about three different drugs in this video, I want to cover the spectrums of sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim, and the combination of sulfamethoxazole with trimethoprim separately. As I mentioned at the top of the video, the sulfonamide sulfamethoxazole is rarely given as a monotherapy in the clinic due to the prevalence of resistant strains of bacteria. Sulfamethoxazole is available clinically only in combination with trimethoprim. The spectrum of trimethoprim is very similar to sulfamethoxazole, however trimethoprim is much more potent. There are several trimethoprim resistant bacterial strains and trimethoprim is not often given as a monotherapy. Trimethoprim does concentrate nicely in the urine and it is for this reason that trimethoprim is sometimes used to treat a community-acquired urinary tract infection. Enterobacteria C are not reliably sensitive to trimethoprim due to the spread of resistance. In addition, P. aeruginosa, B. fragilis, and enterococci are resistant to trimethoprim. The combination of trimethoprim with sulfamethoxazole, i.e. TMP-SMX, is really where the antibacterial action takes place. Staphylococcus epidermidis and S. aurelius are susceptible, and this includes methicillin-resistant strains, i.e. methicillin-resistant S. aurelius, or MRSA. TMP-SMX is active against S. pyogenes and viridin's group streptococci. Streptococci that are resistant to penicillin are usually also resistant to TMP-SMX. TMP-SMX is active against Cervatia species, Shigella species, Salmonella species, Enterobacter species, and Proteus mirabilis. Additionally, TMP-SMX is active against Nocardia species and Stenotrophomonas maltophilia. TMP-SMX is also used in the treatment of P. urovecchi pneumonia and to treat other respiratory tract pathogens, including Haemophila species, Moraxala catarralis, and K. pneumoniae. TMP-SMX is also an alternative treatment for Listeria species in patients that cannot tolerate ampicillin. Most S. pneumoniae strains are susceptible to TMP-SMX, however there has been a rise in resistant strains. Strains of E. coli are becoming increasingly resistant. Adverse effects of TMP-SMX combine the adverse effects of both trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. Even though trimethoprim is fairly specific for bacterial dihydrofolic reductase, high enough concentrations and prolonged usage can elicit anemia, leukopenia, and granulocytopenia due to trimethoprim's antifolate effects. These adverse effects are similar to those seen with antifolate cancer chemotherapeutics. On the other hand, sulfamethoxazole can elicit nausea, vomiting, photosensitivity, fever, urticaria, or hives, and other types of skin rashes. Rarely, as in less than 1% of the time, a potentially fatal type of mucous membrane and skin eruption called Stevens-Johnson syndrome can occur. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Please direct any questions to me on Twitter at Sheehy underscore Ryan. I've also included my sources here. Thanks again.